Today I have the Visonic 19 inch monitor, model number VP930B, that I acquired at surplus auction. It looks to be in pretty good shape. Uh, it has a nice Visa mount stand on it. it. Slides up and down with a spring counterweight system, rotates, turns 90 degrees. Uh, but it does have one minor problem. It doesn't turn on. That's a pretty common problem with these older Visonic monitors. So. I'll show you what's going on inside, but first we have to open it up. So I've set the monitor face down here, and uh, I could take off the Visa mount stand, but I'm just going to leave it on. Uh, there's four screws, one in each corner. Uh, take those out as the first step. I assume everybody knows how to remove screws, so I'll skip videoing that part. Okay, I have those screws out now, and the next step is to remove this front bezel. It goes all the way around the edge. Uh, that actually contributes to holding the monitor together. And what I like to do for that is just uh, put the monitor on the table with the corner hanging out here. And uh, just take my thumbs and pry it up. Be careful you can uh, get this off without breaking any of the clips. I was not particularly careful, obviously. But here it is. And already you can see what the problem is with this thing. Now let's see if I can get this without glare. You have the uh, inverter here to run the backlight. Uh, that's high voltage, so be careful with that part. You have the uh, control board here that does all the video processing. has the uh, video inputs and such. And then this is just a very simple cheap power supply. And cheap being the key word, key word here. Maybe you can't see this on this poor quality camera, but uh, these capacitors here are obviously bulged, meaning that the electrolyte inside is broken down, corroded, and those capacitors no longer work. Um, they chose to use cheap Chinese capacitors in here that uh, after a few years they just quit. That's pretty typical. Um, I'm going to replace those with good quality Japanese capacitors instead. And this monitor will last a long time again. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is pry off this output electrical connector. It has a positive latch on it, so you just pull it out. The wire's going to come off. Remove the uh, ground. And four screws to hold it down. Apparently. And that's all there is to it. Here is the power supply board. And the capacitors that are actually bad are both of these, both of these, and both of these little ones here. All those need to be replaced, however, some of them are put in here in parallel, so instead of putting in really cheap capacitors, I'm just going to put in a couple of good ones, and I don't have to replace all of them that way. To do this task, I'm going to use my professional uh, setup here. Um, you can use those cheap pencil-type soldering irons that you buy at Radio Shack, but I would not recommend it. That's a perfect way to ruin things to use those cheap soldering irons, but if that's all you have, then so be it. And I'm actually going to cheap out here and just replace three of them. The rest of them are inevitably going to fail also in a year or two, but uh, I'll just open it back up and fix it again if I'm still using this thing when that time comes. I can't see this on the camera, but I love it when they do this sort of thing. They have a surface mount resistor clued right onto the cap leads here. It's a side of bad engineering right there.
here's the capacitors that I'm going to use. The uh, voltages on this board are 12 volts or less. So use 16 volt capacitors or greater. These happen to be 25 volt. That will work fine. I'll just use the same cap in every case on these. There's no reason to buy different capacitors. Just use all the same, it's easier. On this particular board, they have a mark here that indicates ground. These caps are polar, so make sure you put them in the correct way, or they will explode. The capacitors that I took out were 1,000 microfarads. The ones I'm putting in are 680 because that's what I have. It doesn't really matter. These capacitors are so much better quality than the ones that were in there that uh, it'll work better than new, even with the lower value. Alright, now I should just be able to put it together, test it out, and hopefully it works just like it's supposed to again. Well, the repair is done, hopefully. Now let's plug the power in to see if it actually powers up. Green light comes on, that's a good sign. Wait for the backlight. And it looks like it works. I'll plug it into a computer to verify for sure, but uh, the problem is that it wouldn't power up and now it does. I work in the industry and it's always frustrating to me to see this sort of thing where they, uh, somebody in the company decided to save literally two or three cents to source components from a manufacturer that is not reputable. Um, this is what we all have to put up with because of those decisions. But uh, if you have one of these monitors, then uh, really it's a 15 minute fix and you're back up and running again. If you have a similar model, then it's probably constructed similarly. Usually it's going to be those capacitors that wear out. In any case, uh, thanks for watching and I hope this helps.